Hi, everyone. Welcome back to VA Made Easy. I'm VA accredited attorney and U.S. Army combat veteran Ed Farmer. Today, we're going to talk about individual unemployability or TDIU, as it's called sometimes. Many of you probably have heard of TDIU, maybe have an idea of what it's all about. Well, we're going to get into more detail in the video, but generally what TDIU is, is if you're unable to work due to your service-connected disabilities, the VA will pay you at the 100% rate, even though your combined rating is not at the 100% rate. So now that you have a general idea of what unemployability is, we're going to discuss six things you may not have known about TDIU. All right, number one, sometimes for purposes of TDIU, multiple disabilities count as one disability. Now, let me explain what I mean. So you probably know that TDIU has certain rating criteria in order to qualify for it. So if you have just one disability with the VA, that one disability must be rated at 60% or higher in order to qualify for TDIU. If you have multiple disabilities, you must have at least one disability at 40% and a total rating of 70% or higher. Here's the part you may not have known. For purposes of defining what a one disability is, the VA has five exceptions to when multiple disabilities count as one disability. So number one, when you have disabilities in both arms or both legs, or multiple disabilities in one arm or one leg. So for instance, let's say you have a peripheral neuropathy in both legs, 20% a piece, and your combined rating is 70. For all these examples, let's just assume the combined ratings is, is 70. So anyways, 20% each leg, 20% combined with 20%, is 40%. Therefore, you would then meet the criteria for the one disability rating at 40%. Number two, disabilities that originate from the same cause or the same accident. Those count as one disability. So say you're in a car accident and you suffer a traumatic brain injury. You got a 30% rating for the TBI. You also hurt your neck in the car wreck. That's 20% rating a 30% rating and a 20% rating combined to be 44%. They round that down to 40%. It all should count as one disability for qualifying for TDIU purposes. Multiple disabilities affecting a single body system. So say you have multiple disabilities all affecting the same body system. So they all affect your respiratory system or your cardiovascular system or your digestive system. So a good example of this is maybe you have coronary artery disease rated at 30% and hypertension rated at 10%. Both those conditions affect your cardiovascular system. 30% and 10% is 37. They're going to round that up to 40. You meet the criteria for a single disability rate at 40%. All right, number four, multiple injuries occurred in action. So say you were in a small arms fight in Iraq and you have a gunshot wound and you also suffer from PTSD from that same incident. That should be counted as one disability for these purposes. Lastly, multiple disabilities from being a POW. If you have multiple disabilities for, and you qualify as a POW, all those should count as one. So guys, in all these examples, I've been using the 70% combined rating with the one disability at 40%. This also works for the one disability at 60%. So using one of these exceptions, if all those ratings combine to 60%, you could say, hey, I have one disability at 60%. So a lot of veterans, they wait until they meet these rating criteria before applying for TDIU. And I understand why. They think they don't qualify. But for practical terms, you know, as soon as you know you're going to apply for TDIU, you should put in the application. And, and the reason for this is, although you don't qualify for it now, you could end up qualifying for it on this date later in the future. You know, if you have to appeal and you end up getting, you know, 70% 
going all the way back to when you open the claim, then your TDIU could possibly go all the way back to then as well. And uh, we'll talk more about why that would be here in a moment. All right, let's move on to number two. Number two, when considering TDIU, the VA is prohibited from considering non-service connected conditions. So sometimes veterans, they have disabilities, some from service, some not from service. If, you, if that veteran applies for TDIU, the VA is supposed to adjudicate that claim as if the veteran doesn't have any non-service connected conditions. So they're sort of speculating here about, well, if this guy didn't have these non-service connected conditions, would their service connected disabilities render them unable to work? That's the question the VA has to answer when you have this situation when there's a mix of non-service and service-related conditions. Well, let me give you an example. Let's say a guy has a lower back injury that's service-connected and a cervical injury that's not service-connected. Somehow the VA has to ignore that cervical injury and just say, well, does that lower back condition affect his ability to work? Number three, the VA must consider your educational and occupational history. So let me explain to you why this is important. Let's say you're a veteran with mostly physical injuries that are service-connected, and your whole job career has been uh, in construction work, a mostly physical job, and now you can't work because your back hurts, your knees hurt, all which are service-connected, and you can't work due to it. So you apply for TDIU. The VA comes back and says, um, well, yeah, you can't work construction. Go get an office job. How? Is that guy who has no experience working in an office, may not even have all the credentials he needs to work in an office, going to go out and get an office job? That's just ridiculous. They have to take into account what you've done in your life and, and whether or not you actually have the ability to get the job they're saying you could get. All right, number four, the VA must disregard your age. So they cannot take age into account when determining if you're eligible for unemployment. So this rule is, is for protecting younger veterans, mainly because if they say, well, you can't work because you're 85 years old, I mean, who's going to fight that? But if the, you're 28 years old and the VA is saying, you could work, you're young, your disabilities will get better, yeah, they can't do that. They have to make the determination as if they don't know what your age is. So if they deny you because of your age, you guys better appeal that. All right, number five. I've discussed this some in the past. TDIU is an inferred claim. So what this means is it's not always necessary for you to file that VA Form 21-8940. Sometimes the VA has to make the claim for you. That's what it means to infer the claim. So when you meet the rating criteria that we discussed in the beginning and there's evidence of unemployability in the file, the VA must take upon themselves to start that TDIU claim. For instance, say you, you file for PTSD and during the exam, the examiner says, yeah, this guy's really struggling working due to his PTSD symptoms. I don't know if he's going to be able to work much longer. And then you get a 70% rating for PTSD. Well, based on the information in the exam, the VA should now infer a TDIU claim for you. Now, why is this important? Well, that preserves your earliest effective date. If you had a 70% rating and they didn't infer TDIU and there's evidence of unemployability in the record, well, that's the date your employability should go back to, not the date you filed the stupid form. Now, guys, don't get me wrong. File, don't fire them on filing the form. Just file the damn 8940 and uh, get it over with. It's, it's going to spare you a headache later. But just to keep in the back of your mind, I may have qualified for TDIU before I filed this form. And, guys, this could get complicated. Get some help if you need it. I mean, <laughs> getting a couple extra years of back pay could be uh, well worth it, especially for TDIU. 
All right, guys. Uh, the last thing you didn't know about TDIU or unemployability, as some people call it, is it, it does not preclude you from working. It does not preclude you from making money. Although there are a lot of restrictions, you could still make passive income. And in certain circumstances, you could still work and still make a paycheck. I made a whole video about it, guys. I'll put a link in the comments. It's about working with TDIU. Go ahead, check it out. Uh, that will go into more detail about when you could work with TDIU. All right, that does it, guys. I appreciate everyone listening and watching. Keep liking, keep subscribing. And as always, you have the power to win your VA claim.